Alright. Hello, Jonathan here. I wanted to make a short-ish video about a tool that I use a lot in Photoshop. And it's pretty much one of the tools that I miss the most whenever I'm trying out another package. It's called Art History Brush, and I'll show you how it works in this video, and then also some other texture and tips. It allows you to make very complex brush marks with very simple tools. Like basically it allows you to control your edges a lot more. And because normally, you know, when you have a, a big brush stroke, say, like I get something like, like this. If I wanted to control that, I don't need to necessarily make a new layer. I can just use the history eraser and I can just remove the part of the brush stroke that I'm not interested in keeping. So like you can see here, I basically just keep the brush stroke as it is. And like I get the nice, I get the ni nicer edge from the, the big brush stroke essentially but then I can then choose to clear it out. The way that the tool works is that it basically takes the, the history state. So this tab I have open all the time and it basically shows your, you could say undo steps, right? It's, it, it takes them to undo history. One of the reasons why I think that people don't organically discover this tool is that it requires the same resolution of the original history state. So say if I crop this image, now when I'm trying to use the history brush, right, which, which can be accessed through here, history brush tool, I get an error saying, could not use the history brush because the current canvas size does not match that history state. Why this becomes useful is for instance, say I make a brush mark, you know, like say I want to draw like a jewel or something, just get the right. Right, I make I mark the the spot, and then now I can just remove the in interior and if I want to get back the original brush stroke, right, I can go in and, and select it in the history state. This gives you a lot of flexibility in the kind of edge you can make. Say I remove, I move this around, then I can actually recover it. So again, I can go back before this much tool and then I can get the edge back. So it really, it really changes how you think about your brush strokes because now you can make, you can choose to make much bigger marks and then basically erase out what you don't need. And now let's see, I want to get back to smudge tool. I can just go back there and redo it. This along with the fade tool, which is basically control F by default, you go up edit fade. You can then control the blending mode of the brush stroke you make. So you can actually like change your mind after the fact. And then using the history eraser, you can, you can really make any edge you want. So here, for instance, I have a problem where you can see I've merged all the layers and that was an accident, right? Like shit. One of the first things that the history state, the first history state that is created is the original file, right? Like, so by just pressing here, I get back the original history state. This means that say, if I do something like kind of like a difficult thing, again, I could potentially just erase it back or I can just return it to the history state. There is no selection return to history state. Like why would they make it work with the whole software? But it's really useful. And in the case of say for instance here, so here I have the horse, right? The horse's hair, get this brush stroke, right? So, what I'm doing here with the hair in order to get these kinds of like blurred, but also a bit of a hard edge is I'm basically putting in the brush stroke and then wait, let me just reduce the side of this. And then I can just erase out the edge that I don't really want. So in case here, 
And that means that I can choose where the soft edge is. Say if I'm using a brush stroke that is trying to achieve this kind of half edge, right? Let's turn this wet edges off, right? I get this, but I actually don't get very much control of the edge because I'm bound to, to the direction of the brush stroke, which is still useful. But in the case of, in the case of having this, I can essentially choose where the soft edge is. And that just makes an enormous difference when you are rendering something out where like you can basically make the brush strokes, evaluate it, see where you need to, to add more stuff, right? Say I'm doing something here on the armor, right? We need a soft brush, right? And then I can just only keep what is necessary and I can check back all the way on this, right? So the history state that you make, I am still doing here, like, does that look better now that it's brighter? I'm like, hmm, it's, it's so-so. But if I re say I erase everything, now if I fade the history eraser, I can actually make it like a very supple thing. Like I make the change I made more gradual. So like if it's 100%, obviously there's no effect, but if it's very low, then it becomes more prominent, right? That's the history eraser tool. Like I, I use this all the time. You can easily access it when you have the eraser tool selected. If you just press Alt as if you were color picking, it will go to the history state. So the only thing you have to do is you have to make the, what's it called? Uh, select the history state you want to achieve from, right? So so you don't even have to have the history 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 menu open all the time. I think it's a good habit also just to see, say, for me, like, because sometimes, like, you do something you don't want to, for instance, like, by, by pressing control, you are moving things around, and seeing the little move allows me to correct for it, right? Because like, I'm looking at the history states a lot. So it helps me not be stuck down the line. Also, because of the history state, right? So, like, there's three buttons here. There's the make snapshot, which by default makes a snapshot that is stuck to the top. I wish it was on the bottom or like it was, you could have it this as a separate menu so you could just check. But basically that's the first snapshot, which is just like the file as it was when you opened it, right? And you can, I can see here that when I'm checking here that this is random brush stroke, that is just that's not, I didn't, I don't want it to be there. But it also means that when I'm checking, I can actually see the exact location where a certain object was in the painting. Achieving this kind of more simple texture, what I'm usually doing is that I'm making a selection. So let's go back here to that history brush document I made. So here's a canvas texture. If I just scale this up, so now I have a canvas texture, right? I'm not trying to rely on the the texture menu in the brushes i i want a consistent nice even surface right like here i want this so i can just fill it in and and, and make that look nice so let me just get a, a texture right like any average texture and the way i'm using these is i'm making a, them into a mask or a selection so that i can just softly brush in and get this even texture across that works with multiple brushes and I think looks very nice. Um, you can see it here in a different scale and the horse's hair and you can also see it here in the grass. Like I'm using basically the same scale of texture throughout. And the way I make these masks is that I go into select, color range, and now I have this. I then go into channels and just make it. So now I have a selection. If I then go in with my brushes again, you see how I basically get the texture built into all the, the brush strokes. So if I'm using a more, a more textured brush, it gets an even, you could say reception. Right, like it, it get, and then if I invert it, it 
I can do a variety of things there. But also because I have it as a selection that is a mask, I can transform the selection. So say, say that I have a building, right? Like that I want this texture to be across, right? So let me just get a little drawing of a building. Right, like a wall. Now, with the selection in mind, I can basically transform that into place. So, if I go transform selection, now I have a wall texture. that basically follows the, the perspective, right? And you might not necessarily use this specific canvas texture. If I feather that and, and make the selection a bit softer, you can then see that you get a bit of a more soft edge, something that's more akin to watercolor. N normally, of course, when you're working with multiple layers of detail, right? Because this is on top of something white. It bleeds through a bit. But when you are just a bit consistent with this, you can really build up some nice things. Yeah, that's it. That's the art history brush. Of course, I can go back in and filter that out and remove some of it. So this also, because this works with the texture itself, you can really create some interesting edges on your brush strokes. Like it really, for me, having this tool has really helped me think of first the, you could say, first the shape, and then I can come in and edit the edge afterwards. It's it's really a paradigm shift for me, at least if this was. And I hope that you learned something watching this video. I originally, I got to think about making this video because I was working on a more long-term texture management, brushes, masks, everything I use to basically make these paintings happen. Because obviously I'm not just using two brushes to, to make these things happen. There's a lot of things that are going on top of that. So what happened was that I started writing and I realized that I had around three or four hours plus a demo to just explain everything that I had, on, that I had in mind. And that's something that I think was would be more suited for like a course, for instance. And if you're interested in that, just let me know in the comments. Else, uh, I hope this was useful to you, friend. And uh, see you later. And I hope you have a good time.